What if I told you that this represented $1 million? You'd been investing your money for years and it turned into a nice 1 million. But then you had to pay about this much of it back in fees because you picked a high cost option like actively managed mutual funds. Not ideal, especially not when there's other options out there where you can keep more of your return. People used to think that they had to try and beat the market by buying these actively managed funds. But not only did these funds perform worse 90% of the time, literally, but even if you did successfully beat the market, you'd have to beat it by more than what these fees are worth for it to even be worth it for you. Luckily, you have cheaper options like passively managed index funds and ETFs. And in this video, we're gonna go over some specific ETFs that you might wanna consider investing in. As a quick recap, ETFs are exchange traded funds. They trade on the stock market, just like stocks do, but they're actually a basket filled with different types of investments, like stocks or bonds. Picture it like this. You could go out there and buy a full-size box of Rice Krispies or a Frosted Flakes for about $4 a box. But what if you wanted to try out eight different types of cereal instead? It'd be pretty expensive to buy eight full-size boxes all at the same time. What's nice about these sampler packs is that you get that little taste of the eight different cereals for a lot cheaper. And you're also diversified. Let's say you bought one full-size box of corn pops, but then as soon as you have your first bite, you realize you don't like corn pops and you're stuck with this full box that you already purchased. Let's compare that back to the stock market now. Let's say that you only invested in one company's stock, but then their stock crashed while your whole portfolio is down. Instead, if you buy a little bit of stock of eight different companies, you have a well-diversified, reduced risk if one stock were to crash. But with all of that out of the way, let's actually talk about some specific ETFs that you might wanna buy. Okay, so there's a lot of different ETFs that you can choose from. So there's about 2,600 in the US and about 800 in Canada. Now, if you're someone who's literally just hearing these numbers for the very first time, trust me, I get it. It can sound super, super overwhelming just trying to fathom just how many options are out there. But the beauty behind today's video is gonna be the fact that we're breaking things down into different sections. That way you actually come out of it with a little bit more direction. So without further ado, first things first, you have to understand that there are different categories of ETFs that are all made up of different pieces. So if we're going back to our cereal box example, you could literally have one ETF that's full of a bunch of sugary cereals, or you could have another one that's full of a bunch of healthy ones, right? Either way, before we get into our list of you know different ETFs that you can choose from, First, let's break down what these categories actually are. So number one, there's ETFs that cover different sizes of companies. So you might've heard of the S&P 500 ETF, right? This would be an ETF that tracks the performance of the 500 largest companies in the US. But there's also ETFs that track, you know, small companies and also medium-sized companies as well. Number two, we also have ETFs that track different industry types, right? So you might have an ETF where it specifically tracks the technology sector and another one that specifically tracks, let's say like retail, telecommunications, finance, you name it. And three, we also have ones that track different geographical locations. So for example, you could have one that tracks just the US market, one that tracks just the total Canadian market. And then there's also ones that track multiple global markets, maybe even all together. And then the last one would be different investment types. So there's ETFs out there that have a mix of stocks, bonds, currencies, you name it. And yeah, basically it might have some sort of mixture of all of these, but for those of you that didn't know, it's not just stocks. So now that we know that there's different types of ETFs, within each type, there's a whole bunch of companies that offer similar products. So some of the biggest companies in the space that I'm sure you guys have heard of would be Vanguard and BlackRock. So to give you guys an example, both these companies have an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. Vanguard has an ETF called VOO and BlackRock has an ETF called IVV. Now both these ETFs track the same index, but they both have different fees depending on the company that you go with. Either way, you probably wanna choose the ETF type that you want first, meaning what's actually inside of that ETF, and then pick the company that offers the best value. So that could mean price. Now your next choice to make is how many ETFs you wanna to buy to make up your portfolio. And if you really wanna keep it simple, then there are a few different one fund solutions that you could choose from. And what I mean by a one fund solution is that means you're just buying one single ETF consistently, but that one fund still gives your portfolio some diversification because it's either tracking multiple industries or multiple global markets. So let's get into the first ETF example that we're gonna talk about today. And that's a Vanguard fund called VT or the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF. Now this is one single ETF that covers the entire global stock market and it's broken down like this. There's 9.9% in emerging markets, 15.5% in Europe, 10.7% in Pacific countries, and then 0.2% in the Middle East. And then the last largest section is 63.7% in North American countries, which 60% alone is the US. 
Now, if you're wondering why the majority of the world's stock market portfolio is very heavily in US stocks and companies specifically, it's because the US economy is the largest one in the world. And the American stock market also has some of the biggest companies in the entire world in it and has these super high returns. So that's why they make up the majority of the portfolio and it sways more heavily in that direction. Now, the rest of the makeup is pretty similar from there. The next highest percentage is in European companies and that's because they have the next highest value and so on from there. Now, obviously when you own this ETF, you own a tiny, tiny piece of thousands and thousands of different companies within it. But if you look over here, you can see what some of the top 10 holdings are specifically. So some of the biggest companies within it, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, Microsoft, obviously a lot of companies that are US specifically based. Now, why would you even want to invest in the entire world to begin with? Especially if the US is the largest market, it takes up the most space in that portfolio, and you're seeing the best performance from it. Aren't you just dragging down your returns and seeing lower results by investing in the entire world instead of just the US market? Now, the answer to this is potentially, yeah, you are. By investing in VT in that fund specifically, you aren't necessarily getting the absolute highest results that you could get compared to some of the other ETFs that we're gonna talk about in a second that are even more focused on the US. But instead, what you're doing is reducing your risk. By having exposure to other global markets other than just the US stock market, if something were to happen that drags down the results from the US, you'd still see returns from elsewhere. And on top of that, if you do believe that other global markets and the world in general is growing and going to see higher returns in the long term, you're kind of placing your bets on that too. Now let's wrap up talking about the total world stock market ETF by talking about the price and performance specifically. So if you look over here, you can see that VT has grown about 90% since it was first created in 2008. And as of right now, one share of this ETF would cost you about $94 USD. Now, if we also look at the average annual return, it's sitting at about 7.5%. So what that means is that if you were consistently buying into this ETF, you would see some years a higher return than 7.5, some years a lower return than 7.5, but the average annual return that you personally would see in the long term is 7.5%. Now let's look into how that compares with some of the other ETFs that we're about to start talking about. Now, if you're someone who really doesn't care about global diversification and instead you just wanna focus in on the biggest stock market in the world, AKA the US stock market, whether or not you're American, it doesn't really matter because you know it's still the biggest stock market in the world, right? So if that's the case, then VTI is definitely an ETF that you should look into. So that's the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. Now this ETF tracks the performance of the total US stock market. So what that means is that every publicly traded company in the US you'll find within this ETF. So once again, that means 4,124 companies, but it also covers a broad range of different sizes, right? So you might have big companies like Amazon and Apple, but you also might have mid-sized ones and also small ones. So that could mean, let's say Chipotle and just random company that I'm sure is so small that we've never heard of. Now, with that being said, VTI is also what we would call market cap weighted. So a really easy way to explain what that means would be, for example, if you were to take a look at VTI's top companies by value, so the ones that are worth the most, so like Google, Amazon, Tesla, Apple. These companies you'll notice actually have a higher weighting within BTI's portfolio. Now, because of that and as a result, their individual returns tend to move VTI's overall return much greater than let's say the bottom 4,000 companies. So even though there's over 4,000 companies covered within VTI, because Apple's the biggest, it accounts for about 6% of the total portfolio. And then if we look at the top 10 biggest companies, they account for over 25% of all of VTI. And the remaining 4,114, they account for 75%. Now, because of the way that they're weighting this portfolio, it actually makes VTI super similar to another ETF that we wanna talk about, and that's VOO, so that's the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. So super quick recap, VTI tracks the performance of all US companies, large to small, and then VOO tracks just the 500 largest US companies. So you know, 506 to be exact. Here's the thing though, these 506 companies in VOO make up almost 95% of the value in VTI. And then the remaining like thousands and thousands of companies account for just 5%. Now, because of this, both these ETFs performance are pretty much identical. Literally, just take a look at the chart. 
If you take a look at VOO, it actually provides a slightly higher return. But just like anyone else, you might be wondering, you know, why would I ever choose VTI over VOO? Well, the key answer to that would be diversification, which is what we keep mentioning over and over again. You might wanna carry a little bit less risk by having your money in the total market as opposed to just the 500 largest companies. So price and performance wise, if you take a look at these charts, you'll notice that VTI has gained over 153% since it was created back in 2001. And you can also buy one share of VTI right now for about $210 USD. VOO on the other hand has gained about 281% since it was created back in 2010. And you can also buy one share of VOO for about $380 USD. Since they've both been around for different lengths of time, if we were to compare their average annual returns over a 10 year period, VTI comes in at about 14.25%. VOO also comes in at about 14.6%. So once again, VOO is slightly higher, kind of like what we were saying before. Now, because these two funds are so similar, it likely wouldn't make sense for you to be buying both of them at the same time. If you were to do that, you'd have a lot of overlap and usually when you have a lot of overlap, it causes less effective results. The benefits of buying both funds really just aren't there. Now, there are times where people will buy multiple ETFs and in this case, they'll either be buying ones that don't overlap so they have different investments within them or they'll purposefully, for whatever reason, buy specific funds that do have some overlap. Now, this could be called factor tilting and that's a more complex topic that we won't get into today. So in that case, we'll just keep things super, super simple. Now there's also an easy way to buy multiple ETFs by just buying one ETF. And I know that sounds like it makes no sense, but I'm gonna explain it. So when you go for a one fund solution, you could buy a fund like VT, like VTI, VOO, all the ones we've talked about so far today, depending on how diversified you want your portfolio to be. But you could also buy a fund like VEQT. VEQT is the Vanguard all equity ETF. And like the name says with the all equity part, it covers mostly stocks, 99.7%, and then a little bit of currency too. Now in this fund, there's 13,674 stocks, which is a ton of them, obviously more than the 4,000 plus US stocks. And that's because in addition to covering US stocks, it also has Canadian stocks. It has developed markets that exclude the US and Canada because obviously they're already covered and then also emerging markets. If we wanna go a little bit deeper and look at how this is actually broken up and what the allocation looks like, it specifically has 43.77% in US stocks, 29.96% in Canadian stocks, 19.19% in developed country stocks outside of the US and Canada again, and then also 7.08% in emerging country stocks. Now, what's cool about this one ETF, VEQT, is that basically what Vanguard's done is packaged up this one ETF with four other ETFs inside of it. So there's actually a specific ETF that covers those US stocks, a specific one for the Canadian stocks, and so on and so on. But instead of you having to go out there and buy four separate ETFs and specifically do the math to make sure you're balanced at that exact allocation, 43, 30, et cetera, Instead, what Vanguard's done is package it up nicely for you, saving you a lot of time and effort just buying the one ETF instead. Now, something that you might have noticed while we've been talking about VQT and that I have to mention here is that obviously Canada being weighted at almost 30% of the portfolio, that clearly doesn't match the weighting it would have if we were looking at the world's biggest economies like we were with the VT fund, which was the total world stock market. In that ETF, 60% of the portfolio was US stocks and only like 3% was Canadian stocks. So why is it so highly weighted in this fund? It's what's called a home country bias. So Dennis and I are from Canada, we know about this fund, and you might want to, if you're from Canada, invest in more companies in your overall portfolio from the country you live in. Now, if you're not from Canada, this fund might not be for you because you might not want to weight Canadian companies at 30% of your overall portfolio by buying this ETF. But what you can look at instead is another ETF made up of ETFs that cover the US market, your home country's market, developed markets, and emerging markets. Now we actually have a full video breaking down more about VEQT, actually specifically XEQT because Dennis invests in that ETF. Very similar to this one, it's just the BlackRock version. So we'll make sure we link that video for you up top in the description box so you can check it out if you are interested. But the main takeaway from this section, whether you'd actually wanna buy VEQT or not, is that you can have the option of buying a fund with multiple other funds within it to get diversification that way. Okay, so now the last ETF we wanna talk about today is actually not a Vanguard one, it's actually called QQQ, and it's made by a company called Invesco, and it tracks the NASDAQ 100 index. Now, the NASDAQ is an index that's made up specifically of US technology companies, so it's becoming more and more popular as of late, simply because, you know, technology companies are the biggest and baddest thing on Wall Street right now, right? So, when we're talking about the likes of Amazon, Apple, you know, 
Tesla, all of these companies can be found within this specific index. QQQ itself has been around since 1999 and it has the 100 largest non-financial companies on the NASDAQ. So basically a whole bunch of technology companies. It's grown over 518% all time. And if you wanted to buy one share of this ETF, you'd have to pay $327 USD. And if we were to look at the average annual return over about 10 years or so, it's 16.55%. Like crazy. Now, this one obviously has the highest return that we've seen today, but I would say it's also one of the more riskier options, right? Like anything that's going to be super, super narrowed in on a specific industry or a specific market is going to add risk to your portfolio. Like what happens when the entire technology sector just implodes or if there's a crash within that specific sector, then what, what's going to happen is that it's going to affect your entire portfolio. Now, with that being said, I still think it's good to show that there's ETFs like this that, you know, have produced really great returns, but also have some risk and are specific to a, to a particular industry. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be a wrap. Let us know if there's any other ETFs that you guys are investing in and why you're specifically investing in that particular ETF. But as usual, make sure you like down below, make sure you actually show us some love. It really does help out the channel a ton. And make sure you subscribe right there in the corner. And if you haven't seen any of our previous videos, make sure you check them out next door door we will be back you know the vibes let's go